This is the Bud Rebel Show. Thank you for joining us today. I have a very interesting guest I'm interviewing. Her name is Herminia. She's a very, very talented artist, and she has a great story to tell us. Herminia, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. I am very, very excited. This is great to have you because you are an artist that first was in New York, that you moved to Boston. And what kind of art do you do, first of all? So I do art of all kinds. Um, I'm a painter primarily. Um, you can kind of see some stuff going on in the background yes, there. Yes, we do. Oh, hello? Um, I do hair, makeup, I draw, um, I dabble in music. So yeah, I got, I got lots of stuff going on. And what's making your story very interesting, if I, don't, I hope to get too personal, is you have a yeah. sight problem. That you just, is that just, I that do. Just came, if that just came up, tell us a little bit about it, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. So I am a blind artist. Um, I have a condition called Stargardt's disease. Um, it's a form of macular degeneration, um, which basically means my vision deteriorates over time. Um, so I was diagnosed when I was 10, and yeah, I create art, you know, it, it confuses a lot of people when I tell them I'm blind, they're like, but how do you, how are you doing all that? And, you know, I just create what I want to see, you know, I, I have these things in my head or even through meditations that I have and I paint. Them. So I, you fully sighted at 10 years old, see the whole world. And then all of a sudden it just goes dark you might say I mean is it totally dark or what do you no saying? no no I listen there's there's light at the end of the tunnel my friend <laughs> <laughs> no so what is your I mean you say you're, you're considered uh, legally blind what does that mean in terms of like what you can see for people that you know don't understand like me right so the term legally blind can mean different things for different people but for me personally I like to describe my vision as like an out of focus camera so I can, I can see like the shape of you and I can see like you're wearing headphones and I see the microphone, but I can't see like any of your facial features or like the color of your clothes or anything like that. Wow. Now I'm wearing no clothes right now. Let's go. You can't see it. <laughs> if, you, if you were, I probably wouldn't know. So. <laughs> you can take that two ways. <laughs> so, so man, oh, my, my yeah. question. My question is, how did you deal with that? That's a, that's a hard thing. 10 years old, all of a sudden, that must be a, a really difficult part of your life. And how do you, you seem like a great you know, inspirational person. How do you deal with something like that when you're 10? You know, I think at the time, I didn't quite understand, like, the, like I didn't really grasp what it all meant. Um, and I think as I got older, like it kind of hit me like, okay, like the realities of what I deal with. Um, and honestly, like it's a, it's a grieving process because I'm constantly losing my vision. So it's constantly oh. like a loss of something, but you know, the, the moment I stopped seeing it as a disadvantage and rather seeing it as an advantage, that's when things started to change for me. Can you explain to us how you see that? That's very interesting. How do you see it as an advantage? Yeah. Um, you know, I think, you know, as disadvantages that it has, but I think, you know, it's blessed me with a unique perspective on life. Um, I think it's, it's granted me a deeper understanding of things because I can't, because I can't see details physically, you know, with my vision, I think I've always kind of um, sought out details in a different way. Like I can feel things out and like my intuition is heightened because of that. So it's kind of cool. I don't know. Wow. <laughs> so when you draw something, you just said you can't see the details. Yeah. Do you, does, that, does that mean the lines? How do the lines stay, you know, organized? How does that work? You know what I'm saying? Um, so basically what happens when I'm doing art is say, I got a piece of paper right here. My, my paper is like here. <laughs> okay, okay. So it's when I get up that close, I can kind of see details. Um, it's still pretty blurry. Like I have blind spots. Um, 
but I make it work, man. You got to work with what you got. That's great. That's really powerful. And and your art, you're selling, this is what you do full-time or you do other work also on the side? I do. I freelance, I full-time, full-time art, baby. Wow, that's great. And you also you say you're also into music. Is that right? I am. I dabble in music as well. Yes. What kind of instrument do you play? An instrument? Are you sing? What do you do? Um, I love to sing primarily. Um, I dabble in guitar. I'm very rusty. Don't don't ask me to play for you. Um, but I uh I grew up uh like in school. I was in like chorus and stuff like that. Um, I'm a big chorus nerd. That's fine. <laughs> um, but yes, singing is very um it's a very unique experience and I think I'm very into like like healing and crystals and meditation and all that so I think singing in any music really like the vibrations help heal you and that's that's a very deep thing that's, <laughs> it's very deep, that's yes. how I see it now the question is you have all this great art how does an artist like you sell it how does that what is it like there's so much out there how does anybody know you your art versus somebody else how do you promote your art, in other words, to actually get sold? Right. That's a very good question, bud. Um, the best thing I can say is, honestly, it's a long process. You know, for anyone that's just starting out. I mean, I've been doing art since before I could read or write. Mm -hmm. um, but I only really started putting it out there um, maybe like three years ago-ish. Um, Where can it be seen, but, by the way? Where oh, uh, so I, I have a website. It's called HerminiaBlue.com. I sell um, prints. I sell some merch. Um, you could also check out my stuff on my Instagram, which is just at Hermenia Blue. So you make a painting. You put it on Hermenia Blue. You put it on Instagram. Like, so back, mm -hmm. to, back to something. I want a painting. I'm, I'm into the painting. I don't know you at all. You, uh, I didn't know you, let's say. How would I know Hermenia Blue paintings. How would I know to click on it? It's just I, I'd be I'd be a fan of your Instagram. How does that come about? I mean, do you, I'm just curious how that whole thing works in terms of that. Um, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> you know, the the best thing that I can do is just be myself, and then hope that people like it. I mean, that's just my approach. Like. I create art that I like, mm -hmm. like that's, that's the number one advice I can give to people is create art that you like yourself. And that's what I do. You know, I like colorful things. I like a lot of the art that I create is also like on the erotic side. So that tends to get people's attention, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, I, I post it and whoever likes it, likes it, you know? And is there galleries that people go to see the art? Is that how, also a way that it, or is it magazines or anybody write about it? Does that help at all? Do you do any of that type of promotions? Um, that's what I'm hoping to work towards for sure. Um, so goal of mine. Now, how did you end up in, you were in New York and now you're in Boston. If you were in New York, we would interview yes. her, right face to face, now on this screen, by the way. So <laughs> how did you end up in Boston? Um, so I moved to Boston um, about six years ago. Um, honestly, just a change of scenery, you know, Boston is similar to New York in like the, the city sense, but it's much smaller and it's much cleaner. <laughs> you know what? I give you a lot of credit. I went to Boston before and I have perfectly 2020 vision or 2040 vision. And I got lost from the first moment I got there. The, the, <laughs> try, trying to get around that place is so confusing. I, yeah, I don't know, the streets is, Wow. No wonder there's so it's many small bad. people there. I mean, that's where they have universities there. People trying to figure out how to get from point place to point B, you know? It's really wild. It is. It's like you said, like for a sighted person, even it's it's, it's difficult. So yeah. for me, it's it's a little hard. I had a friend, um, I always tell this to people. I had a friend that told me, um, if you take a piece of paper and dump a bowl of spaghetti on it, that's the map of Boston. <laughs> right. I can see that definitely. I mean, in New York City, it's first, second, third avenue. It's not too hard. You walk one street, you're on the second avenue. You walk one street in okay. Boston, I don't know where the hell you are. That's what yeah, no. <laughs> it's all all yeah. over the place, definitely. And and so have you been uh, I know there's a big thing I'm not sure pronouncing called Nathaniel Hall. You know Nathaniel Hall? It's that it's a no. I must be pronouncing it wrong. It's a place where there's a whole bunch of different foods. and all Oh, Faneuil Hall. And you say potato, I say potato. 
<laughs> so <laughs> you're close. You're very close. <laughs> yeah. So are you, is that artist also featured there? I was just thinking that might be a place where you could actually probably get a spot if you, if they have artists there or just food. That's a really good point. I've only been to Faneuil Hall maybe once or twice. Um, I don't know. I've, I've had food there. The food was good. Yes, the food was really good. Yeah, that's definitely good. <laughs> yeah. Definitely a good place. And five years from now, let's say, what would you, what do you want to be? Where do you want to be with this artwork? Mm, asking the good questions, but yeah, 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 yeah. um, you know, I, my goal ultimately is to, you know, sell my art, obviously, and incorporate um, advocacy for people with disabilities, um, because that's something that I'm very, very passionate about. And however I can fuse art and the advocacy in any way, like, I'm going for it. You know, again, I'm a, an idea person. That I think there's probably the NASA Association for the Blind. Am I correct with that at all? Um, yeah, Everything. yeah, there's, there's a bunch of different associations so, for that stuff. So maybe you do like a 50-50 split with some of your artwork where you sell it and you get 50% to the charity and 50% to you or something like that. And that's, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, and that's yeah. where you can promote your stuff and help out a great cause at the same time, you know? Yeah, it's, it's absolutely. A to, I'm going I'm to make you a millionaire. There you go. Make a big stuff. <laughs> Bud with the big ideas. <laughs> now, I heard that you're a big fan of our show, which is really cool. <laughs> oh, my God. Here that's is great. our Mame. <laughs> talk of Mame. Yeah, but I don't talk Mame. Oh so God. I got to no. tell you, you got to watch our new show coming up. You're going to see a little bit more about how Mame came about and the whole nine yards. We're going to be having a lot of fun with that. So, I oh, yeah. We're watching Ooh, that. I can't wait. You know, we're putting it all together. So, we're going to be watching more episodes on that. It's going to be a lot of fun. But that's awesome. a little bit more content. So, if you when you get an idea for a, a piece of art, Hermana, mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, when you get a piece of, how long does it take from the idea in your head till it comes out on, be done? Mm, that really varies. Um, I've sketched out and completed paintings in like two to th- two to three days. Um, it or it can take months. It it really varies. It depends on you know the detail of the painting and like how clear of a vision i have of it um yeah and how about the idea of like do you ever make something you just said i don't like this and just like throw it out? Oh, all, all the time all and then, the time and then you come back and say oh wait a minute i should have ripped it up <laughs> yeah yeah that you know for artists of any kind whether that's painting music dance film whatever it is like you're not gonna like everything you make. And right. that's something that it, it's a hard pill to swallow, but like that once once you accept that, I feel like it opens the door to way more possibilities. So yeah, you know, give me a give me a sense of your average day with when you do this artwork and your whole life with this how it works normally. My average, average day. Oh man, if I'm having a good like focus day, I'm I'm waking up, I'm having breakfast, I'm smoking my weed, and I'm painting for hours. Painting for hours. Okay, so you're just doing it for one like can you make that one thing for hours and hours and use oil-based paint, you're saying? Uh acrylic mostly, but I also do watercolor as well. Okay. All right. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. So Hermione, I, it's a, really a pleasure speaking to you. I really I think you have a great story to tell and inspire people that you don't give up. You know, things, yeah. get it, uh, things get in your way. And, and if you really want to do it, you can make it happen. Because, I mean, uh, we hope you send us some of your, your artwork that we can show the world as well and promote your own talents. And again, we, oh, uh, yeah, totally. You know, God willing, you'll become a big star and we'll, we'll see artwork in the Metropolitan Museum of New York, maybe in Boston. <laughs> Thank that would you. be dope. Thank you for joining us. All the best. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.